All right, this will be, today's lesson will be a clarification of lesson two. Lesson two was done from advanced lunge distance. There are th uh, four important things that we're going to talk about. We'll talk about the most important first. While the, the there are things that you might have that you might have missed while we were doing the initial exercise by looking at the gross motions involved, the first and most important uh, part that we need to talk about today is to make sure that the distance is being compressed during the attack. Should the distance be expanding during the attack? the attack won't be successful. A, a pre-planned action um, is successful if the attacker is compressing distance during the move. If they're doing that, uh, then that restricts the defender's time to make a proper decision on what's going on. It, 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 it limits their options. So the coach needs to uh, it, it, to have the student be successful in his footwork without the student understanding that, really. It's not necessary at first. Uh, at first, the coach has to determine the timing and, uh, of the footwork and consequently that the distance will be compressing. Now, later on in a different lesson, we're going to show that there is a specific exercise that will teach uh, the student the red light, green light on whether they're going to continue with the attack and hit or whether, no, red light, stop right there or set up some second action, but don't try to continue on with the pre-planned action because you won't be successful if the distance is opening. We won't worry about that today. Today, I'll show you specifically what we're talking about with the feet. Now, he's gonna, we're going to start at advanced lunge distance. All right, now, as I give the cue, and I'll give a simple one that I drift to the inside so he's going to deceive my six and hit. As I do this, he's going to launch his front foot very slowly so they can see. And then I will move my back foot, but I will be a half step late. He finishes by bringing his front foot up. I haven't quite started my back foot yet. He starts his lunge and hits before I have my front foot placed. So as the coach, I have to allow him to have a half step advantage, a half step time faster than I'm moving. We'll show it again. There. He had the advantage all the way through. Now, I'll show you what you don't want to do as a coach. I don't want to anticipate that he's going to do this and then boogie out of distance. Now, I've just taught him to attack into a situation that's going to be impossible for him to be successful. I could do it in a tie. Good. Now, if he felt like it in a tie, he might be able to pursue and hit it, but probably not. I don't want him to attack unless he has the advantage. Dustly. Try it again. So we move, we move, we move. I let him initiate the movement and hit before I finish with my feet. Here we go. That's, like, that's the first thing to worry about. The second thing to worry about is that his attack must look sincere. If I don't believe he's actually coming in the initial part of his action, if I don't believe he's actually coming to hit me in the six, I'm not going to cover the six. So the beginning of this exercise, the beginning of his attack, excuse me, has to be convincing. 
That means he needs to be sticking his hand out, he needs to be bringing his foot out, and it needs to be in a somewhat violent manner so that I feel threatened. If I feel threatened, I'm likely to parry. Now watch how violently he starts this action. Go ahead. Boom. And this is. See, he throws that thing out to me to show me that he's going to actually make this attack. Now from my point of view as a defender, I'm thinking, oh man, easy touch. I'm just going to do a parry and uh, this guy's already showed me where he's going. I'm going to parry and repost him and that's going to be a great touch for me. Now if he can make me believe that, then I'm dead meat. Nicely. Alright, good. Now, two small things, smaller things. One is we need to shoot from behind his shoulder so that you can see that his hand is actually going to miss my body as he comes forward. That's important. We'll show you why in just a second. But the other thing, the thing I want you to see right now, is that the disengage he does has to be done only with his fingers, not with his whole arm. He's going to hold his arm steady, and just with his fingers and hand will he disengage the blade. That's it. Now, if he did it with the whole shoulder, it would look like this. There. Real clumsy, real easy for me to pick up. He has to show me that he's coming straight, convince me he's coming straight, and make a subtle motion with the blade in order to have me really work at throwing that six to cut him off. And if I throw that six, I'm hit. Boom. That's what you want. Now, Last part, part number four. Let's move a little bit. Number four is that when he makes this attack, advance and extend and halt. Good. His, his arm is going to go right past my body. He can't bring his arm to me. If he brings his arm in to me, now if you'll shoot, shoot right down his right down the, the, the blade there, you'll see that he is just limited his target area. From his blade's point of view, his hand's point of view, he's in a narrow target and a lot of it's covered with my arm. So that when I dis when he disengages, he's got a lot, he's gonna have a small area to hit. Now, if his hand is here, going past my body as he continues his attack, now line up with his blade again. Good. Now you can see that from his hand's point of view, lunge, he has, move over a little bit so you can, there you go. From his hand's point of view, he has a very wide target to hit now. So just from the, the size of the target, he has a better chance of landing on valid surface if he keeps his hand out here. There are other reasons to do that too. I have to reach farther over to do a parry four to stop him. If I do some nice, polite little French parry four, I'm not even going to contact his blade. I'm going to have to do a big, goofy parry four. And when I do a big, goofy parry four, I'm chasing blade with hand. That's a mistake and allows him to make an easy disengage. So for various reasons, his arm needs to go right past me when he's attacking. Here it is. Those are the four points that I wanted to give across to get across on the subtle points of the lesson number two.